This is problem four. Uh, basically it shows if, else ifs, and so the problem here is it wants you to output the string uh, for each of these numbers. So five goes to five, eight goes to eight, and anything greater than nine uh, goes to, goes to, it just is greater than nine. Um, so what they want you to do here is do if tests. So we can say, do, 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 we can say string number, and then we can say if, or first let's explain what's going on here. Uh, so we have right trim, which is defined here. Basically what this is, is it just passes in a, or it just, it takes the, it just trims basically white space off the right and then L trim basically just trims white space off the left. And then we use this STOI. So I've got the reference here. You can see converts string to integer. Uh, so basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna take like a string. So if the string is a number, uh, it'll, I wish there was a better example here, but it just, it, it converts like a string of the two to a integer two, if that makes sense. Um, so then what we want to do here, what it wants us to do is do if tests. So we'll say if n is equal to 1, we'll say number is equal to 1. And then else if n is equal to 2, number is equal to 2. Else if n is equal to 3. So I won't type these all out. I have a I have it copy and pasted. So there you can see. Um, and then the thing to note is then the very last one is if it's greater than nine. Uh, there's this this default else here. Um, so we'll use the printf that we learned about before. So percent s for string, and then we'll do a new line. So we need to do number dot, you remember you have to convert it to a constant character array. So that's you C string for that. And then we'll run it. You can see that worked. Um, there's another way you can do this, uh, and that's using something called a switch case. So basically a switch case looks like this. I'll just copy paste it. Give me a second. And so what this does is it's basically, um, it's just a cleaner way if you have a whole bunch of nested if else tests. So what this does is instead of the four where we had uh, if n equals equals one, and then here's the if n equals equals two, you can basically just uh, cut off some of the, the syntax by doing this switch statement. Um, so you can see what's going to happen if it says switch n. So it's saying if n is equal to 1, run this. If n is equal to 2, run this. If n is equal to 3, do this. And these could be anything. Like this could be a C out. 3 is a magic number or whatever. If that's what you wanted to do, it doesn't have to specifically be setting. Uh, it doesn't have to specifically be setting a variable. Uh, and then the one the one thing to note about this is you don't want to forget the break statements. That's a really easy bug to introduce. Um, but then you can see the other thing is so this if all of these run and it, if none of these conditions are true, if none of these cases are true, it'll run the default. So that's how we grab the nine here. Um, and so you can see this this does the same thing. It's just like a little easier to to read than the, the nested if tests. And then the actual, the best way to solve this. So the problem with all these if tests is it's really ugly to read. Uh, so the, the, if you were to actually implement this in production, what you'd want to do is you'd want to use an array instead. Um, so you can do, so what we'll do is we'll say, so you could have like a, 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 I assume you guys know how to do 
an array. So you can declare an array on one line like this. So what I'm actually going to do is I have it copy pasted here. So I like to use I like to use const here. Uh, here I'll explain that in a minute. So basically, what you can see is we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then greater than nine. And what we can do then is we can say um, well, let's so let's update n. So n is equal to the min of n and ten. So what that's going to do is if if n is greater than nine, it's just gonna gonna go to the tenth index. So then we can go numbers of n. And so what that's gonna do is this this min is gonna cap it out up there. Let's submit the code. Cool. So one other thing you could do is I put the zero in because I think it's cleaner to read. Instead, you could have just done this. But I like maintainability. So we'll leave that there. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to point out is I like this const just because it's, again, more maintainable. So if you have this here, what could happen is somebody, let's say there's code here. Somebody could accidentally we'll say more code. Why not? Somebody could have like a numbers, somebody could accidentally type in like numbers of two is equal to two. And what you could see is, I probably should have done a better test case. So we'll say five actually. Let's say they update the five. So this is gonna break it because what happened is this, this here, this five got replaced by accident in this code. So what happens is if we do const, what this does is it prevents any of this stuff from being changed. So it increases maintainability again. So you can see it gave a compilation error because this can't be changed. So it's just like a safety protocol if you define it as a const instead. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's uh, question four.